Grace and peace be unto you. Uh, thank you for all you have done and your support um, by tuning in, watching the sermons um, that have been. We actually have been through three uh, series already. And I encourage you, if you haven't seen some of the sermons that series that we have put up, take the time to go back and look at them. Um, we're go moving forward. We'll be looking at some more series. And also, as we get closer and closer to Easter, uh, remember, we will have Holy Week where Monday through Thursday I will be presenting the word. And then on that Good Friday, uh, my mother, Minister Frankie Gordon, will deliver the message from Good Friday. Uh, I just want to say I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your prayers and and. In, in your encouraging words that you have bestowed upon this online ministry. Um, last week, I had a chance, an opportunity to go to uh, my hometown uh, in Bavard, North Carolina, um, to the old church that I attended, Bethel a. Baptist Church, um, where Pastor Holder is the pastor of that church, a phenomenal woman who preaches the word of God, who has stepped into the role of pastor there. Um, she gave me an opportunity to come and preach and I want to share this message with you uh, today. Uh, so take a look at this video from last week's sermon. Um, it is entitled, uh, The Blessing of Your Scar. Amen. And I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came on our behalf, who died on that old rugged cross for our sins, who rose from the grave with all power in his hands, offering salvation to us all. Amen. And right now, and I mean absolutely right now, he sits on the right hand of the Father. One day he will return to gather his people to be with him forever. Yes. That's some good news. Yes. Amen. Can we go to the Lord in prayer? Dear gracious Father, first of all, we want to thank you for this day, another day that we can praise and worship your name. And Lord, at this moment and at this time, I ask that you take all the significance that creates Franklin Lamar Gordon out and use me as a vessel. Grant me preaching power to proclaim your truth, nothing but the truth, so that all of us in this room may be hearers and doers of your word. We ask all of these things in your son, Jesus the Christ, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. If you would, turn in your Bibles or in your app on your phone to John chapter 20, starting at verse 19 through 29, that once again is... John 20, the Gospel of John, chapter 20. And we'll be starting at verse number 19. When you have found it, please acknowledge by saying amen. amen. If you need more time, please say hold up. It's quite all right. John chapter 20, starting at verse number 19. And it reads this. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Rejoice, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven 
them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the, of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not, do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Amen. Pastor, when I first looked at this verse, uh, I was I was looking at how it started out and what it stresses in verse 19, the importance of the time of day. Starting right off the bat, looking at verse number 19, it states that it was evening on that day. I, 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 I am with the understanding that everything that is mentioned in the Bible it has a very good reason why it is written. By it being in the evening, that would mean that night is approaching. Now the text shares with us that it was evening and the disciples were locked in the room because of the fear of persecution. Now, hearing this, am I the only one? Is there anyone out there that believes that when trouble comes in our lives and, and that God has a plan to see us through? Yes. Is there anybody out there that, that believes that just like it states in Psalms 35, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning? Is there anybody out there that believes that if my today is going down, then no need to worry because my tomorrow is already handled by God. I, 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 I remember, I have to say, uh, when I was in class and we read this passage in seminary and my professor asked me, Gordon, what is this passage? What is, why does it stress the importance of the time of day? And I looked at her and I said, I, with confidence, when trouble comes in our lives, that God has a plan to see us through, that we may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning, that even though disciples were going through a bad time, they don't need to worry because tomorrow has already been taken care of by God. I felt that was the good answer. She couldn't tell me nothing. She looked at me and she said this, spoken just like a Baptist preacher. <laughs> she said, let me teach you something so that you won't go forward making the same mistake. She said, what you don't understand why the Bible stresses the importance of the day is, you see, the Jewish calendar is not like the American calendar. You see, she went and she said that, see, the American calendar, we start the day, it starts at midnight. Every day starts at midnight. But she said the Jewish calendar sees it totally different. She said, 
the start of day is when the sun goes down. Did you catch that? Let me say it again. We look at the, the start of the day at midnight. But the Jewish calendar says when the start of day happens when the sun goes down. So when I, when I heard this, I looked at her and I said, do you mean that in translation, in the evening is the beginning of the day in the Jewish calendar? She said, you got it right. And ain't you glad that right when the sun goes down, starts another day that God has brought you through. And since a new day has started, get ready, get ready, get ready to see God move. And I want to push this on your front porch of life and make the proclamation that you don't have to wait in the midnight hour to see, to feel, to know that God just brought you to another day. He's already moved when the sun goes down. I just know that we have already just sprung forward an hour. That's good and dandy. But another day has come into your existence, my existence, that God brought you and through yesterday until today, right at sunset. And if that's the case, Pastor, and it makes me just think that, that if that's the case, wouldn't it make sense that when they placed Jesus on the cross, it said night came and fell upon the earth. If that's the case, the Bible says that the sun light failed and the curtain on the temple was torn into two. Could this mean, Pastor, that God wanted a separation when dealing with the old way? The yesterday. Holy Spirit. 
spirit yes, on them. Yes, there's something about Jesus breathing yes, the Holy Spirit on them. He didn't talk it. He breathed on it. The Holy Spirit on it. Do you see what I'm saying? It's one thing for preachers to come up here and proclaim words and it's on you. But it's a different thing when something is breathed on you. And so, but there's a problem. Somebody is missing. Somebody is missing. Someone is missing to see and see Jesus and feel him breathing the Holy Spirit on them. This disciple, I want to say, rejoice that the that Jesus had came to breathe the Holy Spirit. But but like I said, something, something is missing. We got a, a disciple that has seen the miracles of Jesus that we see early in this journey that some Jews, let me say this, some Jews had some animosity toward Jesus and were planning to stone Jesus. But this disciple makes a bold statement of saying, let us go and die with him. But he is missing in action. This disciple was called Thedemus, which means twin. Thomas was not there and didn't believe the police report when the other disciples told them they seen Jesus. Brothers and sisters, oh, let me push this on you. This is, this is, this is something that we have to be uh, uh, accountable and, and understand. If you're not here, when the Holy Spirit is in this place, then you won't understand what has occurred and you won't believe because you won't know because you wasn't here. So when the, the people of God comes upon the world and proclaims there was the Spirit of the Lord in the place, don't be like Thomas. I don't know because I wasn't there. Yeah, you didn't know because you wasn't there. But when you are in God's place, when you're inside the church, and the Holy Spirit reigns and breathes on Thomas gets a chance to place his fingers 
all the scars, yes, the markings yes, of Jesus. Yes, We're seeing Jesus and being able to touch him. Thomas believes. Jesus poses a question followed by a statement. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Well, if you don't, if you haven't recognized, we weren't there. Newsflash, we weren't there. We didn't get a chance to put our hand on the scars that Jesus had. Yes, and I'm sure that many of us in this room today would believe if we had been there, we would have believed. But since we weren't, we would be the part who Jesus makes a statement about. Yes, Blessed are those who yes. did not see, yes. but yet believe. Yes, so I want to have, I want to ask a question to you to right now, and it does require a response. Are you ready for the question? Yes. Do you believe you are blessed? Yes. It's not going the way that you envision. Even though you have been hurt from that person who told you that they loved you and then turned their back on you, even though the job you had, you dedicated your life to, and you still didn't get that promotion, you, you know doggone well you deserve that promotion, even though the friends and loved ones and made their transition to uh, from this life, do you believe that you are blessed? Life is hard. Life is hard. And one lesson that I have to say my mama has poured into me and that I get the older that I get, you know that I'm getting a little gray hair here. <laughs> That is, that right there is a lesson that we need to know. And I want you to, if you were in social media, I want you to tweet this at, tweet this out, you know, hashtag life is hard. And I want you to, I want you to do that. I have this understanding that life is hard. Check. And God is bringing me through. It's a blessing. Jesus displays this in the passage because he died on the cross, yes. rose again, makes a visit to the disciples. Also, Jesus shows them something that I think we tend to forget. This is what we tend to forget, I believe, and that he shows them his scars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Many of us understand scars. Yes, sir. Yes. Scars from our past. Yes, sir. Scars that are painful. Yes, sir. And very hard yes. to get over. Yes, sir. I understand about scars personally. Mm -hmm. And I learned that from my daughter. Mm -hmm. She had a scar of emotion that I didn't know existed and that I found out it was about me. And that was, she would always say, I don't want to go nowhere with you, Daddy. Why not, Trinity? Because I remember you trying to drown me in the, in the, in the swimming pool. <laughs> Trinity, when did that happen? You know when we were when I was young. 
and I was in the water, and you got in the water, and I splashed you, and you threw me, and I was like, <laughs> and then you pulled me out. You was trying to drown me. Okay, Trinity. And I, and I say this, I had to apologize for the scar that I had caused on her, even though I thought it was childish, but still. I still had to apologize for the scar that I created. And with that, there had to be some actions done with that apology. So one thing that I had to do was, even though I said I was sorry, we started to have father and daughter date where we went to the movie, and I tell you, that some of the corniest movies I have ever seen were some of the things she did, but it was the thing that my daddy was here with me watching this movie, even though I fell asleep, but that's another subject. But still, action, even though the apology had happened, actions had to come. So I, I want to push this, that scars are painful, and parents, we have to be aware that there's some scars that we have created in our children that we have to want, first of all, apologize to them, and second, put some actions into to mean what we are saying. Scars are painful. Even when you have them on your body. Mm. Scars are ugly. And we tend to cover them up with clothing, makeup, or filters on our cell phone. You know what I'm talking about. Take a picture on my good side. <laughs> Not this side, but this side. And I want to, I want to preach. You thought I forgot about the title of the sermon. I did. I want to preach on the subject of the blessing in your scar. Yes, the blessing in your scar. Now there is a story in the Bible that I want to use to show the blessing in your scar. And it comes from a familiar story, the story of Jonah. At the beginning of the story, if you, I would, I would encourage you to read Jonah chapter one on your, on your off time when you go home. Read the story. Just make sure that the preacher did say it right. So Jonah chapter one, at the beginning of the story, Jonah tries to run away from God by going the opposite direction from where God was directing him to. Now. The ones that I really want to emphasize are the sailors that happen to be on the ship that I would say was scarred for life yes. for what they had to endure. Mm -hmm. Don't think about Jonah. Just think about those poor sailors mm -hmm. on that ship. And I would say they should have been mad at John. Because they didn't ask for, for this. Just because you wanted to be hard headed, it's now affecting me. I was doing right in life. And then you came into the picture and through your disobedience to God and brought this dramatic incident in my life. How many times have you been faced with that? brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Your life is now peaceful mm -hmm. and a family member mm -hmm. imposes what's been happening in their life mm -hmm. into your life. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was first a them problem. Mm -hmm. Now it became a we problem. Mm -hmm. You were doing good all by yourself. Mm -hmm. And then they come in and here comes a storm from God. Jonah is on the boat and God sends a storm that made the sailors afraid. A storm from God is, is something that will have everyone in this room afraid. 
Because of it is the, because we don't understand why this storm is coming in our lives. Do I do I have a witness about that? A storm for God will throw your life off course. God places storms in our lives to shake us, to open our eyes, so that we can get back on course. Let me say that again. God places storms in our lives to shake us, open our eyes, or to get us back on course. Now this story shows us that a storm from God didn't just play a major impact in Jonah's life, but also in the sailors' life. Yeah. The sailors, mm -mm -mm, every time I read it, I get sad for them. The sailors became afraid and they did what, what I want to stress to us. And that is, when the storm of God comes upon us, the sailors started calling on their God. Yeah. It was the wrong God. Huh. Yeah. But I want to stress what they did. They called on God. Mm -hmm. And by this, could it have been when we are faced with a storm from God, God knows we are only calling on him because what is happening? You know how we are. You, we, 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 we know how we are. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we only call on God when things get rough. Yeah. And, and we don't know which way to turn. Uh -huh. That's when we get on our knees uh -huh. and pray longer. Yeah. Read more than one verse a day uh -huh. in the Bible. Yeah. Or we get those crying eyes and cry real hard mm -hmm. hoping that God is going to change his mind or make it all right for us. Can you see the sailors crying out? Save us. But here comes the good news. And that is when the storm comes and when we call out to God, he will answer. Jonah says this to the men. I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Mm -hmm. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Mm -hmm. The answer came from God through Jonah. Jonah gave the answer, but the answer was one that the sailors didn't want to accept. God answered sometimes will be in a way to us that we are not in favor of. Amen. Yes, sir. We don't understand why God is doing it this way. Why the way we think would be better, it's not the way God is operating. It is hard, I mean hard to swallow with how God answers. The sailors at first refused the answer, but later on in the text, they accept and did what Jonah told them to do. Then comes the last one, the revelation of God. The storm stopped. And they offered a sacrifice to the real, true God. Yes. Remember, at first they prayed to their God. Yes. But when God answered and they did what God, the true God, wanted them to do, then they made sacrifice to the true God. And it was only when they received and accepted the answer of God yes. that the storm So the storm of God 
the calling of God, the answer from God, uh -huh. and the revelation of God. Uh -huh. If you take notice, the first letter spells out scar. Uh -huh. The blessing of the scar is that you understand that you've been through the storm yes, of God. That when you call on God, that he answered your call mm -hmm. and made a revelation in your life. Yes. You see, scars to us, we might want to hide. Mm -hmm. But I say it's a true blessing to have a scar. Because yes. a scar reminds you of what you've been through. Yes. And a scar is what reminds you of where you are right now. You see, scars may look ugly, and they might look disfigured, and they might be discolored, but thanks be to God, you got a scar that shows the blessing of God. Let me tell the story, and I'm going to get out your way. I know this for a fact, quite honestly, and my mama can bear a witness on my behalf. You see, underneath this robe and clothes, there is a scar that begins at one end of my belly and goes to the other side. For what you don't might not know is when I was first born, when I wasn't able to keep things down. That everything that I would eat or mainly drink, because I was a baby, I couldn't keep it down. The doctor says if he can't keep things down, then he's gonna have to, he's gonna pass away. You see, what they did is they had to go inside of me. They had to perform some surgery inside of me. Because inside of me, my intestines were flipped upside down. And by them being flipped upside down, that would mean I would die if they never did correct it. What they did was they made the, 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 the actual intestines the right way. Uh -huh. Making a pathway so that I could keep my food down. Yeah. But one thing happened through all of that surgery. Yeah. When they patched me up yeah. and they and time grew old. Yes, my mama tells me my father looked at me one day yeah. and saw that scar on my stomach. And he said, he's already got a scar in his life. What I want to push on you is that I was a baby back then. But thank God, 
céu 